For most of the 1980s, uh, there w really wasn't such a thing as pre-release hype for video games. That was until Super Mario Bros. 3 came out. When it came out in the United States, it carried a really strong print TV advertising campaign, but it also carried uh, The Wizard, a motion picture that basically existed as an advertisement for Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, it was a lot of manufactured hype, but it turned out to all be totally legit and worthwhile because Super Mario Bros. 3 is probably one of the greatest platformers ever made. Uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 kind of takes it back to the basics. You're back in the Mushroom Kingdom. This time, Koopa's kids, the uh, Koopa kids, have taken over the seven different worlds in the Mushroom Kingdom, uh, turned all of the kings into various animals, and are just running amok. So it's up to Mario to go through, clean shop, and eventually take out Bowser himself. Now, this new version, Super Mario Advance 4, is essentially the same game. It doesn't really make that many core changes to the Super Mario Bros. 3 formula. The differences that it does make are primarily superficial. Uh, they bump up the graphics a bit so that uh, you have some parallax scrolling in the background. Character sprites have better color depth. The whole thing just looks better. It's a better looking game than the original was. The sound has been improved to take full advantage of the Game Boy Advance's synthesizing capabilities. But they've also done like they've done in previous Super Mario Advance games and added in little voice samples for Mario when he dies or picks up a power up or something like that. And those just feel really forced. It's like a special edition Star Wars kind of thing and it's just, it doesn't fit quite right. Um, it might not annoy everyone from that regard, but at the very least, you're going to find it just sort of repetitive and annoying. Still, the rest of the package is so good, it's kind of forgivable. They've also made some other kind of small, weird changes to the whole formula. Really, only veteran Super Mario Bros. 3 fans are going to notice this, but in certain spots, you'll notice that they've put a few extra coins in a corner, or maybe there's an extra block that'll keep you from falling off so easily. Again, very small things, but if you've played the game a lot, you will notice them. Uh, what's actually more affecting to the gameplay is the fact that they've now included a save system, sort of like they had in Super Mario World. Originally in Super Mario Bros. 3, you just had to play through the game beginning to end in one sitting. You didn't really have any options other than, you know, pause in your system and turn off the TV. They've now put in the save system, which allows you to just, just sort of divvy up your Super Mario Bros. 3 experience into smaller portions. Uh, they've also added in e-reader support in Super Mario Advance 4. You can get special Super Mario Advance 4 e-cards, which will uh, allow you to add in power-ups to your game. So you get yourself a Super Leaf card, you can just swipe it through the e-reader over and over again, give yourself a, you know, unlimited number of Super Leafs or whatever. There's demo cards, which give you a demonstration of like the perfect way to go through a level. But the coolest of all the e-reader stuff is there are new level cards, uh, which you can use to using the appropriate e-cards, swipe them through, and it'll unlock these special standalone levels. It's, it's a nice little addition, but the whole e-reader system, real clunky, real hard to use, barely is worth it. If you have this stuff, it's cool, but this isn't something that you're going to go out and get all the gear for. So Super Mario Advance 4 has the whole Super Mario Bros. 3 package, which is just a phenomenal platformer. Uh, even today, the whole package, the, the whole game just really stands up. It's still really good, even though it came out like 14 years ago. And if you've not played it in a long time, it's great to pick it up again. If you've never played it before, you owe it to yourself to try it out, because this is one of those fundamental experiences that you really have to have to understand where video games came from.